The objective here is to explain the difference between a port and a socket. The title should be, Ports are a part of a socket. A prereq before watching this, you really should know what IP addressing is, like how it works, uh, maybe the ways we conserve IPs, because there's a limited number of IPv4 addresses. These are the things you should probably know about before really diving into a video like this. So the ports we're talking about today is the ports for communication, not business, though the ideas are pretty similar. Instead of goods being sent across the ocean in these containers, we have packets being sent across the internet. And once at an IP address that is a specific city, it needs to go to a specific port in order to drop those packets off. So simply, a port number is used as part of a network connection. Now, not all network communications will use ports, though. The most common protocols that are using ports, UDP and TCP. Those are the transportation protocols. Now, other protocols like HTTP, SMTP for email, those protocols are using TCP as a protocol, and they would need port numbers in order to be used. That might sound a little confusing to say that protocols use other protocols, but... If you think of protocols as like an agreed uh, set of rules to do something, like there's an agreed set of rules or protocols of hammer use, you know what the handle is, you know what you're supposed to do with it, you can use the protocols of a hammer, you can use the protocols of a saw in order to create a shovel. So, so you can use a TCP protocol and the HTTP protocol in order to create this ability for clients and servers to um, communicate and uh, have this relationship. I suppose that's said right here, the relationship to send and receive web pages. And this idea is often used in computer science, the idea that tools are used to create other tools. I often tell my students the programming languages out there, you can view them as tools with a specific um, ability or purpose to achieve specific things. Can you cut a board with a hammer? <laughs> yes, it'd be ridiculous, it'd be ugly, it wouldn't make very much sense. Same with some of the programming languages, you would not want to use them to achieve certain things. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking about uh, creating artificial intelligence with JavaScript. Those two just don't seem to go together. Not impossible, but just not the best tool for the job. All right, so we have these protocols that need port numbers in order to work. So here's some non-examples of protocols that do not need port numbers, but, but it's still involved in network communication. Um, the most famous one is just ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. This is used by network devices to send error or other messages. So for example, if I'm trying to get to a server, um, if I'm trying to get a service or reach a destination network, I need to know if it's unreachable. Or I could potentially be sitting there all day waiting for no reason. Like if the message that a host is unreachable can be sent to me, then I can move on. So in that sense, the ICMP message, it doesn't need to use port numbers. So remember that, ICMP, not ICP. If you don't get the reference, that's a very good thing probably. But if you're a visual learner, you're looking at this hatchet man, and you're thinking that the ICMP uh, messages is all about knowing when your network has been hacked away, like there's no connection. And there are many types of ICMP messages. Ping is probably one of the most famous um, commands. It uses um, the ICMP echo request message and the echo reply message to tell us if an IP address can be reached. If it doesn't exist on the network, then we get the could not find message. So like I said, there are many control messages. We can take a look at just some of the most notable ones. So using the code zero, we can get a reply when we ping a computer. It either exists or it doesn't on the, a network. Don't need a port number because nothing is going to be uh, being done on that foreign computer. And just look at the description of all these types of messages. You'll have a network unreachable, a host unreachable, a protocol unreachable, even specifically, we can learn that a particular port is unreachable. It goes on and on, and so if you have some free time, you can really like dig into these and check them out. Some of them look like they're specifically for IPv6 networks. I hope that's not confusing. I should say IPv6 uh, part of a network, because you could be both uh, IPv4 and IPv6. 
Oh, but notice these are all deprecated, including this interesting sounding uh, skip algorithm discovery protocol. We have ourselves a no error message. Oh, and a really cool, uh, two cool experimental ones. I'll have to look more into that later. So I think by seeing what doesn't use a port, you could better wrap your mind around the need for a port. The need for a port will exist because the foreign computer is going to have a process connected to that. There's going to be some action on the other computer's end. That action will be tied to this port. So think about that. Both computers have port numbers, and the port is a place inside of a computer. Think of it like an address to an address, so it's an internal address. The external address would be like the IP address. And to keep this video simple, just think of like an, a program and a process as basically the same thing. I mean, I know they're definitely not the same thing, but you can have multiple programs running on your computer. That is, you can have multiple processes running on your computer, and each process will have its own uh, port. If I open up Chrome and I have an email tab open, there's a port. If I have a Google search or maybe I'm on reddit.com, then that's a whole nother port. There are 65, well, over 65,000 ports. So another way to think of a port here is um, when you get to a computer, in order to get a service, you need a service number. And this service number is called the port. It's as simple as that. If you're browsing the web, you're initially going to use HTTP or HTTPS. Um, S is for security. So this is the better one to use. And when you're using it, you're beginning communication on port 443. I just imagine those ticket counters at like maybe the DMV or something where um, you grab a ticket so that you know when your turn is because it has this number on it. Now why have ports um, if we already have IP addresses? Not only because a computer can run multiple, multiple processes, right? We talked about 65, um, over 65,000 ports. But this idea that we assign specific ports for specific processes can help us build security around these ports. So don't get frustrated with the fact that there's 65,000 of them. You don't have to memorize them. There's just a slew of reserved ports that you'll probably want to know if networking is your future or your present. So let me explain what a socket is, and then we'll go look at some of those ports that are reserved for specific things. A socket can be described as a programming interface allowing a program to communicate with other programs or processes on the internet or locally, but we're going to focus on the networking part. Um, what does all this mean that a socket can be described as a programming interface? Well, I need an IP address and then a port number, and that is the interface that a program would use in order to create network communication. So wow, they are terms from two different domains. Port is more in the networking, particularly TCP IP domain, while socket and socket programming is an API thing. A socket is made in code by taking a port and a host name, the IP address, and combining them into this data structure. So a socket is a data structure, just like an array is a data structure. Now that we have this socket data structure, we can send and receive data. And if you do something as simple as type in netstat on your own computer, you can see some of your machine's connections. So right here, I have a TCP connection, the local address, here's the IP of the local address, and then there's the port number that this connection is existing out of. Go over here, it's communicating with another computer with this IP address, and then the big number at the end. I like it when they put the colon here, but this big number is the port number. And the connection is an established connection. So these are two big numbers, 5,000, 49,000. That probably means that those two computers have already gone through an initial setup, and now they're just communicating over these two big numbers. You see, once two computers make this initial connection, you can change the ports that you're working out of. Again, it's a programming thing, and with programming, we can do anything we want, whether it's a good idea or not. So as we begin to look at all these port numbers, and remember, over 65,000, uh, let's just look at the first three uh, ways they're going to describe the ports. So if it says yes in this uh, TCP or UDP column, if it says yes, then the described protocol is standardized. 
I don't know why they call it protocol when they're talking about a port number, but I guess I can understand because they're taking a port and they're assigning it a concept and that is the protocol. Why? Because it is widely used for the port number or it's widely accepted. So TCP and a number is going to be, so if we go down here, a TCP and the number one, uh, everyone agrees that's going to be the TCP port service multiplexer. And if you want to know more about this initial setup, uh, I have a video called TLS Byte by Byte where I look at how a server says hello, well, a client says hello to a server, and they go back and forth. At the byte level, I explain what's going on. Because at the byte level, we'll know if we're using TCP or UDP. But let's scroll up and see what no means. No is just that the described protocol is not standardized and specified or widely used for the port number. So that's kind of up in the air one. And then assigned, I thought assigned would be like more serious, but it seems less serious than the yes up here. So if it's assigned, it's a port number assigned by IANA, but it may not be standardized or specified or even widely used for such. So IANA is a big, powerful organization, but I guess they're not the end-all, be-all. So the first few ones you might not be too familiar with. Let's get down to one you are. So port 80, that's for HTTP. That's for you to get a web page. When working on that port, the things that are supposed to be sent and received should be HTML files and CSS files. JavaScript is a normal thing to be on a web page. But HTTP has some limits, so we're going to go with 443 to make a more secured connection. As you can see here, um, this, no matter what, is saying that if you contact a server and use this port number, the process on that server will encrypt the data it sends to you. You'll have the key, so you could decrypt it, but we're trying to create more security on the Internet, so that's why that port number directly relates to a process concept. Okay, so there's all kinds of numbers for all kinds of things. Um, some more common ones, the email ones, there's a few of them. That's somewhere on here. I suggest you go to the Wikipedia port numbers to just uh, browse. But here we go. Some of the ones that I see the most is uh, SSH. So that's a, a secure communication, secure logins, used for secure file transfers and port forwarding. So port 22 is our uh, magic number for that. File transfer protocols, there's two of them there, 20 and 21. Oh, and let's look at Telnet. I always use the example, Telnet is uh, port 23. Telnet is for unencrypted text communications. Sound like a good idea to have unencrypted communication, even if it's innocent? Well, no. So this is an old protocol that we should not be using. A lot of servers prohibit its use, so there is no port 23 that those computers will be using. And a good way to remember this old protocol that's no longer active is the number 23 is Michael Jordan's old number, and he is no longer active. Once upon a time in the good old days, Telnet was a widely known protocol. The part of the internet that was created by academics, uh, they probably were not too worried about encrypting their communication. All right, so a server can connect three IP addresses to three different sockets on the same server in order to provide those three separate people the services they are looking for. Okay, so imagine you and um, two other people out there in the world, you guys all want to go to uh, the same server to get something. That server can connect three IP addresses to three different sockets on the same server in order to provide those three separate people the services they are looking for. You talk about online gaming or they're looking for their social media updates, whatever. Fans of Destiny know that this is a really bad image to see on your screen because it's saying that the Destiny service servers are not available. Very frustrating. So if you think about that, that these ports are connected to an IP address and those two make up a socket, the socket itself, the, they are protocol specific. And you might see it like this. Um, DNS will figure out what the IP address is here. So google.com on port 80. Um, you are also associating a new port number on your machine with the connection. So on your machine, it could be whatever port number your machine decides or the program you're running decides. That is like Firefox or Chrome or Edge or whatever. 
there are other applications that require network connections. I'm thinking about my daughter's uh, Sims game when she loads that game to see other people in the world on the game. That program, the code in the game, would have a port number. So another look at this IP address, port number, together we got ourselves a socket address. I typically hear it just called socket, not socket address. So there's a good analogy in a book called Computer Networking, a top-down approach. It's an analogy of a house that wants to communicate with another house and the like, and they compare the concept of the IP address, port, and socket to but I like to compare this concept of a port IP address socket to a hotel, okay? You have this hotel and it's at an address, okay? It's like a server. And that hotel address is just part of you getting there and finding your room number, which would be the port. So once you get to the address, get to the specific room, inside the room, the pro whatever process you want can happen. Whether you're going to a hotel party, or maybe you're just staying the night so the process is just to sleep there. Uh, maybe you are just going to have your family hang out there because you're at a conference. Whatever processes go on in the room is specific to that room number, that port number, which is at that address. And that's a nice analogy for me because you're really breaking away the concept of a port is a networking thing, but a socket is a programming thing. Once you know what the socket is, once you know these two things, you'll know where you'll end up. Both hosts are directly connected to each other, even though there are numerous routers or switches between them. So that's why we call this an endpoint. A socket is an endpoint, not the connection itself. So I know I've said this before, you're probably tired of it. Just go ahead and pause if you need to read it again. But the ports are an internal addressing to a machine. Here I go with another example of a chat client. And you can pause here and read this as well. But I think by this time, you're really getting what I'm saying. So a client socket will try to connect with a server socket. A server socket accepts a client socket request. For TCP, it looks like this. The first time the server comes online, there is a socket that it creates. The server tells the socket to listen for connections on that port. Now when a connection arrives to the server, it'll accept it on its new listening socket right there. From the client perspective, the client has created the socket and then it's trying to connect to an endpoint, say Google uh, on port 80. If the IP address for Google.com is listening on port 80 and open to sending and receiving data, it will. But guess what? If some catastrophe happens and Google needs to shut down or a website, any website needs to shut down, it can just close its ports. So here's the image we'll end on. I just don't want you to get confused that once you start communicating on one port, doesn't mean you have to stay on that port. But sometimes you'll see um, compute the client using 25, the server using 25. They'll both just stay on that same port. It's not a big deal. Often with browsing, a server will have the port 80 listening, and the client will work off whatever number they want, and communication can go back and forth that way. So I hope this clarifies what a socket is. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.